Uh, Rosalind Russell. Dead. Uh, Merle Oberon. Dead. Um, Jane Russell. Alive, but don't you want to do some young, fresh faces yeah, on yeah, the yeah, cover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Irene Dunn. Dead. Jane Arthur. Dead. Look, how about Emma Roberts, Amanda Seyfried, Blake Lively as an alive, Kat Dennings, Zoe Kravitz, the Jonas Brothers, Olivia Thurlby. Who are these Anna people? Stone. What about Myrna Loy, Doris Day, Brown. Annette Finicello? Oh, Annette Finicello. I must have been dreaming. I must have closed my eyes. There for a moment I thought that your lips touched mine I must have been dreaming That I could feel your kiss Great! Jane. Well, what do you think? Um, I, I, I love it. I, I, I love the idea. In fact, I've even got a tagline for it. Great, what? The new wave. Hi, I'm Graydon Carter, and I'm pleased to introduce the August issue of Vanity Fair. According to Jane Sarkin, this month our cover features four of the hottest young stars on the planet. Kristen Stewart, Blake Lively, Emma Roberts, and Amanda Seyfried. The cover story, Hollywood's New Wave, written by the incomparable James Wolcott, profiles the class of 2008, whose members are graduating into a world in which their every move may be photographed, their every Twitter message read. And many of them will be casting their first election ballot this November. I'm also thrilled to be publishing the most detailed report on the troubles that plagued Hillary Clinton's seemingly infallible election campaign. This spring, veteran reporter Gail Sheehy immersed herself in the contentious, finger-pointing world of Hillary land, where no one is willing to accept blame and everyone still seemed to be wondering what happened. I'm also excited to share with you a fascinating story about the shocking demise of Bear Stearns this March, which some say could go down as one of the biggest conspiracies in Wall Street's history. How did a rumor propagated by competitors and cable news talking heads lead to its $27 billion collapse? Star reporter Brian Burrow has the inside story. The effects of the Bear Stearns demise and the mortgage crisis in general are being felt in an unlikely place this summer. As Michael Schneerson shows us, the always soaring Hamptons real estate market has taken a hit recently on account of Wall Street attrition. Out-of-work bankers and hedge fund gurus are now having to short sell their houses just as they did their stocks. This is creating all sorts of problems for the well-heeled folks who like to spend their weekends on the East End. On another shore, Kurt Anderson, my old partner at Spy Magazine, is reporting for Beijing on the Chinese capital's surreal new skyline. While it's become customary to describe the city as futuristic, Anderson sees a parallel to Manhattan at the turn of the 20th century. It's a sensational piece, and the photographs by Todd Eberly and Stephen Wilkes are breathtaking. Never known to be a coward, this month Christopher Hitchens subjects himself to the dreaded form of interrogation known as waterboarding, twice. U.S. officials tell us that this treatment simulates the experience of drowning, but Hitchens explains that it actually is drowning. And if it's not torture, as the government tries to tell us it's not, then Christopher wants to know what is. I'm Graydon Carter, and thanks for joining me again this month. Over to you, VF Studio Orchestra. We've been practicing.